Hey, it's Boober. I'm a Canadian distiller making spirits in England. If you're interested in distilling or the drinks industry, then this is the channel to subscribe to. So, what are we doing in today's video, Dave? So in today's video, we're actually making our mulberry gin liqueur. So let's go. Wait! Tall, dark, and handsome, tall, dark, and handsome, tall, dark, and handsome. Today we're making our mulberry gin liqueur. Our Stratford dry gin forms the basis of our mulberry gin liqueur. So for a more in-depth video on how the Stratford dry gin is made, check out the link above. The iStill 250 has just finished a gin run, so let me get the drainage pipe from the closet and set it up. I'll open up the hatch and take out the used botanical bags. I'll just hang them up on the sight glass for now so that any excess liquid can drip out of the bags. Now I'll take out the hook that the bags were hanging from. No! Ah, wouldn't you believe that the only time I drop the hook is also the only time I'm filming. Such is life. Luckily Sam has long arms, so he was able to get the hook from the bottom of the still. Once all the liquid in the still is drained out, I'll rinse out the still with water. Now I'll slowly raise the top column part of the eye still so that I can take out the sight glass and clean the copper packing material inside. I'll bring the sight glass full of copper packing to the sink in the back and soak it in some warm water and citric acid while I get the botanicals ready for the next gin distillation. I've cleaned the copper packing and put our gentle botanicals, rose petals, lemon peel and orange peel inside the sight glass. I'm putting back the sight glass and tightening the bolts with a pair of pliers and a wrench. Now I'll charge the still with some 96% neutral grain spirit and some water. Now that the still is charged with our alcohol and water, we'll close it up and turn the still on to heat it up. It usually takes about 45 minutes for the still to heat up, so in the meantime we can weigh out the rest of our botanicals that will go into the pot. There's fresh rosemary, juniper berries, lovage seeds, lemon balm, angelica root, coriander seeds, and sage. David will wrap up the botanicals in this cheesecloth with some string, and then he'll take it and put it inside the still, where these two bags will hang from the hook that I dropped earlier. The spirit collection is separated into four sections. The four shots, the heads, the hearts, and the tails. We discard the four shots since they have methanol and other poisons that will make you feel sick. Based on the temperature inside the pot, the eye still will make these cuts automatically. We collect the heads and the tails separately. The hearts, which is the good part, will become our mulberry gin liqueur and is collected in this 50 liter steel drum. At the Shakespeare Distillery, our products have a Shakespeare theme in that the ingredients in our gins are inspired by the Tudor period, which is the period when Shakespeare was alive. Mulberries were a very popular fruit during that time, which is why we're using it to make one of our gins. So the story goes that in 1607 and 1608, King James I of England asked the nobility to plant 10,000 mulberry trees to support an English silk industry that would rival that of France and Italy. Unfortunately, silk production didn't take off in England, and it's often repeated that King James I's project failed because he imported the wrong tree. 
as silkworms prefer eating the leaves of the white mulberry tree over the black mulberry tree. Silkworms produce a coarser silk and less silk when they feed on black mulberry leaves. Although it's more likely that silkworms disliked Britain's cold and damp climate. The gin right now is clear, so we've got to make it purple. And we do this by steeping dried mulberry in it for around three months. Here is a box of dried black mulberries. It was my first time trying mulberries and they're a bit tart at the start, but they have a nice, rich, sweet flavor to them. The mulberries have a lot of sugar, so they're sticking to each other. We're gently prying the block of mulberries apart and putting them into this muslin cloth bowl now. David told me that normally, once a year, they go to New Place, which was William Shakespeare's final place of residence in Stratford-upon-Avon. There's a mulberry tree planted there, which is a descendant of a mulberry tree that Shakespeare himself planted. With the approval of the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust, they harvest the mulberries from this tree to make a batch of their mulberry gin liqueur. David said that you have to be very gentle when harvesting mulberries as they break and mush easily. That's why you'll never find them in the supermarket. We've divided our mulberries into two muslin bags. Then we'll take our Stratford dry gin that we distilled earlier and add reverse osmosis water to bring it down to 50% ABV. Now we'll steep our mulberries in the gin. It's just like magic. Look how quickly the gin took on the purple color of the mulberries. After dunking it in a few times, we'll seal this container up tight and leave it to sit for around three months. After three months, it's time to take the mulberries out. Here is David winding up the muslin bag to squeeze out as much of the juice as possible. It's squished. Then he'll let this bag sit in a container and squeeze it every so often so he can collect as much of the mulberry liquid as possible. Look at the mulberries now. They're so gray and ugly looking. They've given away all their color and flavor to our gin liqueur. Now we need to measure the ABV, but we aren't able to use the Anton Parr Snap 40 like we usually do because the sugar content added by the mulberries will mess up the reading. So what to do? Well, our method of checking the percentage ABV is to take a 250 milliliter sample of the spirit and put it in one of our small copper alembic stills. To this, we'll add 150 milliliters of water. Then we'll distill it. The water we add is purely to ensure that the pot never boils dry during the distillation. We're trying to distill out all the alcohol from our sample. We'll collect around 220 milliliters of spirit from this, which we top up with water to 250 milliliters. Then we'll use the Anton Parr to measure the percent ABV of this. After we finish this, we'll pour our collected spirit back into the container with the rest of the mulberry gin liqueur. David will now add in sugarcane syrup and more reverse osmosis water to bring the spirit down to 30% ABV. This is a gin liqueur and not a gin. What's the difference you ask? Well, a gin must legally be at least 37.5% ABV to be called a gin. 
whereas liqueurs have a lower percentage ABV than this, usually around 20% ABV. As well, gin liqueurs are usually sweeter and easier to drink than gins. Now for the all-important quality control test. I do like that, like, um, like raisiny aftertaste that you get with it, like. Mm -hmm. Like when people try it and they say it tastes like Christmas, I like, I really, it kind of annoys me, but then when I try it, I'm like, oh, can I get it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Once the mulberry gin liqueur has passed muster, we'll bottle it, label it, and then it's ready for the shop. So I hope you enjoyed watching us make our mulberry gin liqueur. In the meantime, please support the channel by giving this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more distilling and distillery videos. This is Rupert. And this is Dave. Sending good vibes your way. We'll see you next time.